So in this video, I'd like to touch on a couple of ideas that were brought up in the documentary, maybe tell you some post story of what's happened to the painting and such. And if you do have any other questions, uh, feel free to email me. I'll leave my email in the description. And uh, of course, this is uh, the documentary we just saw. I hope you enjoyed it. It is one of my absolute favorites that I show in nearly every class. So the biggest question I get, or the most frequently asked one, is if Terry is still alive. And unfortunately, she did pass away in the summer of 2019. And uh, she had a battle with bladder cancer. And about a year, maybe a little bit before that, uh, she also had like quadruple bypass surgery. Uh, but up until that, she was very, very healthy. And she didn't even take anything stronger than aspirin. Full disclosure, I am friends with Terry Horton. We met in 2011. Uh, we've been friends ever since. And um, she was really a great person to know. Uh, that painting on the back, uh, I have seen several times. In fact, I put it up on the wall. So my fingerprints are there along with Jackson Pollock. One of the things to note also in the film, because um, I'm just used to the pattern of the painting, uh, it was upside down in most of the documentary, which kind of drove me a little nuts. Terry Horton um, was a fantastic person, and she reminded me a lot of my grandmother, who, you know, would give you a sip of beer, who would let you drive the car by sitting on her lap, even though you were five or six years old. Um, she would cuss like a sailor. In fact, I usually sh say that she taught me how to cuss. And uh, really a fantastic person. And uh, I wish you had, uh, had known her. She did speak to at least one of my classes. Um, but, you know, that was, you know, she was right around 80 at the time. And it was fairly difficult for her to get around. We also saw in the film uh, Peter Paul Biro who uh, was the forensics expert. Uh, this is one of the things I think that Terry had a, a problem with, that she didn't get a forensics expert from Southern California. And I mean, this is the area where we live. I'm sure we have a lot of experts in this area. She went to Canada. Not that Canadians are bad or anything like that, but she just went with someone who was outside the United States. And that seemed uh, a little odd to me. Todd Volpe, uh, I did read his book. It is uh, something that you can get through the Iliad system at the school library. Uh, interlibrary loan basically is what Iliad is. And it's a fun read. It tells you all about this person's life. And it it is quite fascinating. Um, he started off as a mortician. He worked, uh, he has a degree in mortuary science. And he then went back and got his degree in art history, opened up um, quite a famous gallery in New York. And that's where he met all the celebrities and they brought him out to Los Angeles, which you heard about in the documentary. Uh, he did go to jail for two years on fraud charges. And since then he's become a born again Christian. Uh, I have tried to track him down to talk with him, but he has not returned uh, any of my emails and such. And then we have John Myatt, who is also a convicted art forger. Um, again, I think um, this is one of the not so good things that Terry did was kind of surround herself with people who uh, had been found guilty of these types of crimes. Uh, John Myatt, though, um, got his own TV show in England called Forger's Masterclass which you can find episodes on YouTube today where he trains people to paint in the style of the different masters. So one week, for instance, it's Medigliani, the next week it's Van Gogh, the next week it's Monet, and so on. The painting is quite mesmerizing to look at and definitely does appear to be a Jackson Pollock painting. But of course, it's really about that fingerprint. And you can see how the painting itself is kind of wrapped around these stretcher bars. And stretcher bars are basically, if you would, the interior frame of the painting that holds the canvas in place. Basically, what Terry and her researchers believe 
is that this is the original number five painting that was purchased by this guy Alfonso Osorio, who was also an abstract expressionist painter, but primarily a collector of these works. And he purchased the original number five painting, which was on canvas. The painting became damaged in terms of the paint started to slip. It wasn't completely dry yet. And Pollock took the painting back and gave him a completely brand new painting, which is in the books as the number five painting, uh, which is on fiberboard. So no one knows what happened to the original painting. Um, however, you know, during the documentary, a lot of the argument was, well, how did this painting get to Southern California? Well, Pollock's youngest brother lives in Pasadena. Uh, his niece lives in Ontario. And so it would be real common for this painting to, to get out of the New York area. So again, Terry next to her painting. And then here we are in uh, Bill's living room. Uh, I took this photograph and we'll zoom into the painting a little bit. Terry did live at the trailer park up to her last days and that was her trailer. Uh, she did have an oceanfront view which is um, I think why she lived there, it was a, a perfect setting. Uh, all the stuff that is in front of her trailer, she got out of dumpsters and such. And I remember one day uh, going up to her home and there were piles of frosted flakes going up the steps. And I asked Terry to go ahead and get me a dustpan and a broom and I'd clean them up. And, and she's all, no, leave them. I left it there for the squirrels. So, um, she was a pretty cool character. Again, more stuff. And the interior of the home is exactly as you saw it in the documentary. That was her view. So we've got some preserved wetlands and then the Pacific Ocean. So beautiful view from her trailer. Here's her and I talking outside. And this is a video. Let me see if it'll play for us here. The movie is patterned after Asher Edelman, who is a, 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 he's, he's a millionaire, but he's a, an, also an avid art collector. And I let him keep it one time. He's the only plan, time I ever let anybody have it in their home, but he's got a young wife and a young son. I knew he wasn't going to, he's too well known in New York. But anyway, he got five so-called art experts, which there are none, of Pollock to s that they would support the painting for him that it was indeed by Jackson Pollock okay but he wouldn't tell me who any of them were, were. I found out who one of them was was uh, Pepe Carmel who was a, a teacher a professor at New York University and, uh, and, and eventually uh, Asher and I split and uh, I didn't do business with him anymore so I got a hold of Pepe Carmel and said since you would support the painting for Asher Edelman, would you support it for me? You'd go on TV with me because I was going to do the 60 Minutes show at the time, and he refused. He wouldn't do it. Wow. So that, what's that tell you? <clears throat> I mean, Asher Edelman is powerful in the art world, and they would these four, five experts would have supported it had I not gotten stubborn in my head of my ass. Why well, I could have probably had it done by now. But if you watch Wall Street, I had no business trying to buck with Asher. Being, and when I found out that he was a corporate raider, I thought he was a football player. That's how <laughs> she was on uh, Facebook as well. And this is one of the paintings that when we first went to see um, her art and the storage facility, they also brought out this painting. This is a true, authentic Jackson Pollock painting worth about $50 million and roughly the same size as Terry's painting. Terry Horton as a child. This is a more current image of her and her son, probably about two years old now. Uh, her son does a lot of um, golf tournaments. And then one person also you may have seen sitting next to Terry in the documentary was uh, her boyfriend, Cal, uh, who you see in the back center there. 
And um, when, if you go back through the documentary, you'll be able to see him sitting next to her at a lot of the scenes where they're kind of sitting around the table eating fried chicken and drinking beer and such. And I did get to meet him a couple of times also. Uh, he died a couple years previous to Terry, and he was uh, a really cool person. Terry uh, also would always uh, say that she could always gauge how good a, uh, a boyfriend or a relationship she would have is how far that uh, they would travel with her when she was truck driving. And she goes, the, the farthest one made it to uh, Albuquerque, and she uh, sent him back on a bus. And so at the very beginning of the lecture, I uh, showed you the newspaper clipping of Terry's passing. This is further down in the story where they quoted me. You can pause the video and, and read through this. But otherwise, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I will see you at our next lecture.